Hi, how are you guys? So we're live on Instagram and we're live on Zoom. Today we're going to talk about uh, Matt versus Dewey or Dewey versus Matt. So kind of because a lot of people think that Dewey can be greasy. That's a great word that they use. Um, oily. What I like to say is fresh. And I don't want you to be oily. I don't want you to be greasy, but I want you to be fresh. And dewy and fresh and with some moisture on your skin is youthful. And if we put on a foundation or anything that is too matte, it can easily, that doesn't always age us, but it just isn't as fresh and it doesn't make, give us that youthfulness. So that's what we want. Now, not only is that in reference to foundation, it's also in reference to contouring so matte when we use contouring is great for say carving out your cheekbones matte in the eye in the crease we would use some matte, uh, matte shadow in the crease to give more definition to the crease to make the eyelid pop uh, matte on your lips can be just more saturated color if you want your your lips to look a little more pouty and fresh and full, you're gonna to wanna to add a little bit of glow or a, a finish that is more um, shiny, shimmery. So those are kind of the areas uh, of focus when it comes to dewy versus matte. So we're gonna run through uh, an actual how-to and Janet uh, was part of the event that I did when I rebranded my whole uh, uh, brand. And you'll find her all over the website because we did a great, a big a photo shoot and Janet that's was, me. That's, <laughs> that's her. And uh, so it's fun to have her with us. And so let's start because this is, we have 45 minutes and uh, if we have any questions, we'll try to get to the questions. Let me give you a little bit of, you guys get to see what we do behind the scenes. So if someone has their makeup already uh, or their hair already done, uh, we use a little, uh, a pin and a little bit of a tissue so that it doesn't leave an indentation in the hair. So when we remove it, the hair is just perfect the way we set it up. You know, I never knew that. I love that. You didn't know why that, yeah. what we were up to. <laughs> I love that. That I would uh, start with an exfoliation and a polish. So we would do Super Clarity Refinishing Cream as a foli exfoliation. She actually just cleansed her face with micellar cleansing water. And the micellar is great because it has a mushroom extract and the mushroom extract helps bring down the inflammation on our skin. Not only does it, is it cleansing, but it also is brings inflammation, which is what we need for anti-aging. Bringing down inflammation is counteracting what is happening in part due to the aging process. So it's also an anti-aging micellar water and it's soothing on the skin. It's really great. Yeah. So we would then move on to an exfoliating and polishing. We're gonna skip from that uh, and we're gonna move right into doing what, uh, adding the actual uh, skincare products and get to, this, to the eyes as quickly as possible. I'm gonna do what I do in my workshops, which is I put the product and the brush in your hand. Ooh, instant, visibly moist refreshener. So it brings moisture to the skin. You can use it at the beginning of your makeup. It's also great at the end of your makeup or in the middle of the day to bring moisture back. And it smells like heaven. It does smell it does. like heaven. It smells like heaven. It's really nice. Great. Next, we're going to use my two favorites. We're going to use Super uh, Recreation Skin Firming Serum. And I'll give you, a, you can put a little, just a couple little drops right in the palm of your hand. And then we're going to use Super Radiance Exfoliating Fresh uh, uh, a treatment, which is a vitamin A, which has triple A and triple C, which continues to work in the realm of fresh, dewy skin. The one that's more of a amber color, that's a firming peptide based firming agent. And the other one is more of a, it helps the skin turn over the vita, the, the super radiant skin treatment helps the skin turn over. I like to add them both in together. This one smells like oranges. I use this daily. This is what this is part of my daily regimen. When you're putting on a serum or a cream, don't forget your neck. 
is going to be dressed uh, with maybe a, a wrap or a kimono or a gown on, but I can work all the way through down into the chest region based on what she's wearing so that we'll put foundation, we'll put primer also in that area to make the, her look flawless when you film her. And then to the hands, I saw you do that. Yeah. Yep. So you just add the little extra back right into your hands. It's, mm -hmm. it's great. Next, Super Radiant Skin Protection SPF 50. The most amount of protection as you can use. The number one problem we have with breaking down our skin is the sun. But the sun is also our friend. We, lo we love the sun, but it's also the thing that's going to damage our skin the most. So, oh, I see I have a little bit of mascara, a little bit of <laughs> mascara, a little bit of mascara. Work life. Oh, I really went for it. <laughs> That's good. It'll absorb in. This is, I, I do, this is something I'm ashamed to say that I've only just started doing in the last couple of years. So why have you only just started using sunblock? You know, I think because I had sunscreen. To, I had to go, I had a sun, a couple sunspots pop up that I had to have lasered off. And I was like, oh, okay, well. And did the dermatologists talk to you about sunscreen? Yeah. And just that that's the number one thing that's going to wreck, wreck my skin if, you know, or like it shows signs visibly early. The sun is our number one enemy, mm -hmm. but we need the sun too. Now, this is our number one asset. It may not, maybe some people don't think that, but it really is really important. And we don't want to have to go under a, a knife to start removing things. So the best thing is to start young. All right, so what I love about this is it leaves the skin radiant, it has a nice scent. Yeah, fresh scent. And also everything feels so plump and juicy. Plump and juicy. So we have the recreation skin treatment and the super radiance. And then on top of it, the SPF 50. Tinted primer. My other favorite also has SPF 20 in it. The color we're using today is medium. Would you use a brush or would you use your hand if I you're usually, at home? I usually put it straight on my face with my finger and then I use a brush to mix it all in. Perfect. That tinted primer in medium, it has uh, ceramides and a, mm. a, a an adaptive tone technology that adapts to your skin. So there's only four shades. There's fair, light, medium, and medium deep. I used medium deep and fair the other day. You go ahead and blend that in. Uh, but the nice thing about it is it tends to blend well with your skin. If you had a color that was a little too dark, you could easily make it work. If the one color was a little too light, uh, you know, you're essentially, we're not, this is not a product that we're trying to cover the skin. We're protecting the skin and we're just evening the skin out. When we would put it on, they would say, oh, it feel, it looks really dewy and greasy. And give it five to 10 minutes and it just kind of calms down to this very nice radiant satin finish. It's really beautiful. Move on to eyes. I'm gonna take the tinted primer after we do the eyes and I'm going to add a little bit of this just underneath and around the eye. This little secret that I use after we do the eyes just to make everything pop color called glorious it has a shimmer on it so we want the eyes lid to pop and so we're going to put a nice shimmery mid-tone color and i'm not going to tell her how to do it i might give her a little suggestions exactly what i do when i'm in a in a workshop working one-on-one -on -one. but i'm just going to hand her the the product and give her what kind of brush would you use would you use a flat brush or would you use a little fluffy a little fluffy. Perfect. So this is my shadow blend brush. So she's just gonna add it right there onto the lid and then into the crease. This is perfect. You can see it has a taupey, light golden, very neutrally tone. I love it. So you pull it into the crease a bit. That's great. So the fluffy brush is great for pulling into the crease. That was no nonsense. Really simple. So look at how beautiful that is. It's beautiful. It, it's like the, sophisticated and it's, fun. It's like really nice. Yeah. And I really do. So it did settle in. And also it it's not, it's so nice because it's kind of like, 
I look like I'm not wearing makeup. I look like I'm not wearing foundation. You know? Right. But it just kind of evened yeah. out everything. And if we wanted to, so say if we had a little spots, mm -hmm. we could, we could take that product and spot it, or we could take the liquid mineral tint, which the liquid mineral tint has a little bit more coverage, or we could take the skin stick foundation, which is a natural finish, which I use when I do contouring, but I also use when I'm doing concealer. Next, let's do eyeliner. And we're going to use black. So she's coming from underneath. Do you do the tight lining? Uh, I do. Great. And you, she doesn't have to pull her eye up at all, you guys. She can just go right in there with the pencil. She's gonna grab just a little bit on the bottom. And there's a smudger if she wants to use a little smudger on the bottom, oh. if she chooses to, to kind of soften. Now, something to remember, this product will dry down to a very tight finish. Uh, if you notice, this stays. And I put it on about what a minute, minute, two minutes ago, and it's holding. But in the beginning, you can work with it and blend with it. Here's a little Q-tip if you want to clean up that right in that inner inner eye, that little spot there. So grab it before it dries. I guess I feel like whether I use my fingers or a brush to do it, but but especially when I'm trying a technique like Jana did, um, I just feel like. I have to go faster or it's going to dry and be hard yeah. to smooth and, right. and then get cakey. And then I'm like blotchy. And then, so I, this is what's going through my head and suddenly I'm going faster and faster. And then I don't know if, you know, depending on the product, for sure. If the product is more of a, a full coverage and it's mm -hmm. not so dewy, it's more on the, in the family of matte or a natural finish to matte finish. It, we will have that problem where it will begin to dry down quicker. Okay and it will become less budgeable. It's more opaque. Most of my, the primer, the liquid mineral tint is translucent and they're, they have a, a moisturizing quality to them. They're much more forgiving when you're using them. So you could dot them on and you could okay. slowly apply it. Unlike the, <laughs> the liner. Yeah, no, no. Like, like I, I asked my uh, Kevin, my assistant, I said, can you grab me the micellar water? Because, you know, <laughs> I, I don't want, uh, you know, even there, I can see it. There's a little bit of, there's still a little bit on my finger. The, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I, and, I, and I wiped it off as much as I could. But the eyeliner, mascara, they stay and they dry down okay. rather quickly. Okay. Uh, so the five, I use your tinted foundation now. So it, it's now I, it definitely has a, a better look and feel to previous products. Where do you feel like the liner is going when you're actually putting it on? Do you think it's going right in between the lashes or do you going, are you feeling that skin below the lashes a lot right up to the eyeball? I feel like this skin up to the eyeball. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But probably okay. it goes right up to the lash. It goes, it goes to the lash because I can yeah. see the lashes are moving. And okay. would you add any eyeliner above? I do. And yes. did you do that yes. today? Not much. Not a lot. And but what? And this is what what you would do usually. Yeah, I might get a little fancier and like add a little extra. So get a little fancy on us. Okay. Ooh, it's dangerous. The eyeliner is so <laughs> I, dangerous. I know, and we're live. <laughs> we're live on Instagram, and we're live on Zoom. And the liner is creamy though, but still, it is a liner. You know, so it can grab. Uh, but what I do like that what uh, Janet is doing is she's lining from the outside in. And what that does is it helps you control the application so you don't start making a mess going outside the eye. It's a much, much more controlled application. A little tiny baby wing-ish. A baby wing, love it. <laughs> I do eyeliner. I, when I'm applying eyeliner, I come up and notice the, the positioning of my hand. I'm not, this, this is no, this is yes. Obviously this is when I'm applying on myself and she's kind of doing the same thing. I like to add the eyeliner right into the waterline, right in the lashes. Is it better or worse? Is not better or worse, but I will say this, is when you add a little bit of line, when you add liner into the lashes and you wanna put la liner on the top, there's a bit of skin that sometimes can get in between the lashes and the bottom la lash, below the lashes and the upper lashes. You wanna make sure that skin has liner on it completely. Make sure it's completely filled with eyeliner.
So if you come underneath and you go above, just make sure that you enclose it because it will remove the, the punch that you're getting with the liner. So you can put it right into the lash line. And if you just do it on the lash line and you don't do it above, that's more clean. And that makes it look like you don't have liner on. And that's a really great day look. It makes it just like nice. If you wanna go a little heavier, bring it down into the lash line closer to the eyeball and it'll give it more depth. Janet also put some on the lower lash line, correct? Yeah. Did you put it in the water line also on the lower lash line? Yes. Very, very common. I probably did, did a halfsy. I, uh... I love that, a halfsy. <laughs> and then just kind of blended the rest over. Yeah. Yeah. Just like a little boop. And it's a little boop. <laughs> very soft, very subtle, it's not heavy, but it encloses the corner of that eye. I feel like eyeliner is what, like, if you, like, going big or going small is what takes you from, like, a totally natural look to having more of a, the baboon. It's all about the eyeliner. It's all about the eyeliner. The eyeliner is what takes it to the next level. I would always do eyeliner no matter what, because I find Me eyeliner too. the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Unless I'm going for a non-eyeliner look, which is a very specific look. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be more, would you put mascara on at that time? I, I would. I always have to just a little bit. And the key with doing that application of mascara is if you're doing a no eyeliner look and you're using mascara, you don't want to bring your mascara all the way to the skin. Because if you take your mascara wand all the way to the skin, then you're going to get a little bit of mascara into the waterline sometimes. That's interesting. Yeah. A lot of women use their mascara as eyeliner. You can use liner to make this more expansive. This is how you get more eye, more framing, building it up. It's a matte color called Voila. It'll go on, it's kind of purpley, maroony, burgundy, because it's not too red. It has a little blue, but it, but it works on everybody. So I'm going to have you add this. We're going to use an angle brush. Would you use an angle brush? I would. Okay. So she's just going to add this a little bit to kind of give her a soft smokiness and she can go right and she'll show you what she does. It's beautiful. It just adds a little drama, a little definition. And that's where you want to keep your drama in your makeup. <laughs> On the eyes. That's right. Yeah. So if you're wearing a mask, eyes have definitely come back in the world of makeup because of the pandemic. Lips have taken second string, second chair. We're never going to get rid of lip products because women love to change their lip color all the time. So you take a little bit on the bottom just to kind of connect in. Mm -hmm. You worked it into the crease a little bit just to give it a little bit of definition in the crease. You worked it on the outside of the eye to kind of carve out that eye and give it some shape. I do think I need to work on my blending skills. That's something I'm working on. Would you put anything else above the crease onto the brow bone area, a soft tan or a, to, uh, or would you leave this clean like this uh, as it is? I think I would, I would probably like everyday look, I would leave it clean as it like is. It. Yep. Yeah, I like it too. I like it. Occasionally, I'll go all the way up. Yeah. A lash curler when you do your makeup. Yes. Yeah. So notice she's using the angle brush and just kind of carving out. You like it? I love it. Perfect. This is my favorite. This is glorious. It's glorious. And it, it is, is glorious. glorious. <laughs> Brian named it glorious. glorious. And it's glorious. <laughs> and it's glorious. Let's do a little bit of curling. Talk to us about your how you what you do when you curl. So I let it go right in between and I've noticed that little multiple Pump, pump pumping action seems to be a thing. Do you move the mascara, the lash curler at all out the lash as you pump or do oh, you just do I it do at not. the base? I just do it at the base. Should I be moving it, you think? Well, you could. That's what uh that's one of the things we do. If you have these long, massive lashes, oh. you can kind of uh, hold and pump as you work out. But as you get to the very end of the lash, you don't want to curl the lash at the very end because then you'll have a, a right angle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I know this is my lash curler. What lash curler do you use at home? I don't know. <laughs> this as is he, very comfortable. This yeah. is very, very and, easy, very comfortable. 
I'm just like, I'm going to just keep doing it. <laughs> so you kind of do uh, multiple. You would work rest. back and forth. Yeah. All right. Navy is uh, great for brown for brown eyes because navy uh, opposite on the color wheel, uh, blues and greens opposite brown. This is a ma this is max defining lash mascara. It is curling, lengthening, thickening, and conditioning. There's four uses of this mascara. Huh. There's the concave and convex, and then I use the concave, so that gets me really tight into the base. I use the tip really close into the inner and then the outer. Sometimes I move the brush so I get the corner. And then I use the concave on the ends of the brush just to give it lift and to give it curl. A couple of those if you need them. Nice, mm -hmm. beautiful. The skin, I love your skin. I know, it feels really good right now. Yeah. Notice she uses the mascara wand. She goes from one eye to the other, she doesn't change the mascara wand, uh, which I uh, teach. What I teach is I teach you to do your mascara like this if you're right-handed, and then I teach you to bring your elbow over here so that the mascara wand is always pointing inward. Just a, a concept, because then you have more control of, because if you're here and you go across yeah. the nose, you can hit the color of, from the mascara and it can hit the nose. So doing it this way, it helps with application. I feel like there's so much value in becoming the expert of yourself. This, my whole concept started. So when I was working for Mac uh, years ago, I had the same clientele that I would see over and over. They would come back every few weeks, the same women, and obviously many, many women in between, but they would say, Brian, I'm having, I, I, I don't know how the conversation would go, but it was like, oh, Brian, can you do that again? Oh, I can't do that. And literally, I had done that technique, done their eyes, did their lips, did their whatever, multiple times. They just kept coming back. And I was like, oh, I want to teach them. I want to make it so they can do this at home. Of course, the makeup counter is like, well, then we're not, they're not going to come in. But women are always going to come in. They're always going to want new makeup or new techniques or whatever. So... The whole idea was for me to take the brush and put it in your hand and me to step back. So then you, then I guide you. So for example, when she's doing her mascara, I'm watching her do her mascara and I say, try this technique instead of this technique. And, and I can watch you. And the amazing thing you guys, world of being on cam on on zoom and being live and and being on a screen actually is very helpful for teaching this there's nothing like being live for sure this this one on one but with me right in the screen and you in the screen and it's like a mirror and i'm talking to you through that magic mirror i can see exactly what you're doing. And when you're doing it, I can say, bring your elbow up and make it so the bristles are pointing downward. Now turn the brush and make sure that you can use your fingers to turn the brush. And then I can, because when I'm in a room which is live, when we're here, I have all of this room around me. And it's, and I oftentimes will teach in a group. There's another group. And there's a lot of women wanting my attention. One-on-one, -on -one, I have to make sure I get right in front of her when I'm live. Here, obviously, I'm on the side. But this and watching you, sometimes all this going on is difficult. But that camera tightens it and brings it right there. And that's what Zoom, what online, what everything has done for us. And for me and for what I do as, a, as an expert teacher, it's like really help, it helps you to be able to learn. Even though I know you wanna come see me, you're welcome to come see me now, great, but you can still learn what I teach and we can do it live, one-on-one. -on -one. It's such a good investment because it's something that you do every single day. It's your first, you know, five seconds of somebody, you know, deciding what kind of person you are. They're just taking you in and you get to automatically learn how to become the best version of yep. you. Uh, we're going to do two lips today. First, we're going to do, this is a brand new color. And 
I, it's not in the pinky family. It's not in the peachy family. It's very similar to our lip color family. It's called Beibachi. It's uh, like hugs and kisses or love and kisses in Italian. Hmm. It's very, I, what I love yeah. about it is it's sheer and glowy. It's very easy to wear. It's very similar to your lip color. It's very easy to wear. Mm -hmm. So she's it's a gonna- It's a perfect every day. It's a perfect every day. But because this is so sheer, it just adds a nice gloss and adds a little color. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. Um, I have your bloom lip yes. color. Stick, which I love, a uh, my lips but better color. Bloom. That's how it works. Yes. 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 So it for me it works really well as a everyday, you know, goes with just about everything kind of go to lip color, which is agree. great. I have the bloom. Oh, I'm I'm really liking. Funny enough, those two colors are pretty similar. There's, oh, there's bloom. There's okay. a bocce. Yes. Very, very yes. similar. So here, bocce, and here's bloom. Yes. Yeah, yeah it's lovely. It, it really yeah. is lovely. Both these colors, faves of mine. Mm -hmm. but she's going to use Cheeky Glow uh, Cream Blush Blooming Dahlia uh, blend, the, 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 the new one that I have. And then we'll come back to, uh, to lips what I'm gonna talk about on lips. Now, would you use both of these colors? Well, you, what color would you, are you drawn to, the peachy or the pinky? Well, I just started with the peachy. <laughs> so I guess the peachy, but also the pinky, I think. I, that's three, I, they're individual, so show everybody the, okay. the, the packaging. So this is our peachy. Dahlia. This is the pinky. Blooming. Okay, so Let's see the difference between the two. There, there they are. There you go. I like both. I like both for different days. This feels like a, like a, you know, like. Is this peachy? Yes. Dahlia. And it feels like a summertime. I probably would do more of an everyday pinky. I yeah. probably would be, and I would probably mix them up a little bit. Maybe yeah. do a little more peachy here and pinky here. Great. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Very soft, very. Yeah, lovely. And I feel like it's something that I, I, I've been getting better at putting on Good. color. Cause uh -huh. I feel like I, I tend to, I'll just like, you know, forget about it. But then I'll be like, oh yeah, no, I could use a little extra putting color back into my skin. Cause we put a, put a tint of primer on your face. I mean, we've evened out the skin tone and you need to add some color to the cheek that needs to, and it gives more uh, roundness to the face. It, it, it makes everything work. Let's take that lip off. Okay. And oh yeah. So she's gonna use the Meissler, which I don't. And this is the this has the mushroom in it with the anti mushroom extracts. Yeah, anti-inflammatory. So cool. And it's used a lot yes. in Chinese medicine. I'm all about mushrooms. I yeah. I do brain mushrooms, chaga, and stuff in the mornings. Oh, cool. And I love. How do you do a brain mushroom? Skin. It's an extract that you just tinct like tincture. tincture. Yeah. And oh, it's okay. a whole mixture of, but I, this is, I think that's so cool. Mwah. Perfect. Boom. How do they feel? Delicious. Good. We're going to use, which I love, want, I've been wanting to use is a long wear, <laughs> long wear mat. So this is a color called, um, is, is it Isabel? Cover all of her lip color. And the application is actually easier than one thinks. So don't be scared. Of okay, it. I do get scared of that. I, I, I tend not to ever do Would you do go it. to the top of the lip or the bottom of the lip first? I think I go to the top, is that what Yeah, so build, work, work with the, yeah, yeah great. Yeah, okay. work with the Cupid's bow. It's gonna be much more neutral. So with a neutral lip like this, we could easily bump up the eyes. Dries down in about, Mm, two minutes. And the key to putting this on is once you finish putting it on, don't go back to fix it. Okay. It has to be on, particularly on the inside of the lip. It's very sophisticated. Like there's something very polished about this. How does it feel? It feels good. It feels unmovable. Yeah, it is unmovable. But it, but it doesn't feel like overly like dry. 
Oh, uh -huh. okay. Now I see it. Yes. Now so I see it. Not far off from Bloom. Yeah. Not too much. Not, not much. A, a little creamier, a little more, yes. a little lighter, but it's, and it goes great with blooming and Oh, down. it sure does. Yeah, both. That's beautiful. The key to wearing these liquid lips, the key is to put it on, get it on, and let it dry. It feels great. It feels like, no, it's not drying. But, uh, see I think my skin runs dry, so probably it just like absorbs right into my, but, yeah. but it's not dry. Go ahead and put dry. one more, uh, she's going to put one more coat on uh, just to see what happens. And I, I really like this. It makes me feel really put together. Isn't that funny? But it's like, a, but it's a really like, it sort of just so in closes all the difference In yeah. difference to the other lipstick. Yeah. You feel more sophisticated? And I think it's it's the color and maybe the fact that it doesn't move and like, it, I know it'll be there all day, but the color really, I feel like it pulls all the makeup in. It does. Yeah. Because the other color is a little, has a slight more purpley undertone. Uh -huh. They're definitely mm -hmm. two different tones, but this yes. one, it pulls the pe the cheeks, it pulls the eye, the voila. It yeah. pulls all those three colors in really nicely. Okay. I would say right at the beginning of your makeup application, put the uh, recreation lip treatment on mm -hmm. because it'll absorb mm -hmm. into the skin on the outside okay. and on the lip. So that by the time you get to putting this on or putting on lip liner or putting on whatever, it's there's no barrier on the skin. Okay. It's already absorbed. So then it'll have much longer staying power. Yeah, it's very, uh, it is very sophisticated. It is. Yeah, but it. it's funny because on camera, my screen, it doesn't read the same as it does in in real. It's soft, it's pinkier re in real time. It's also so so nice because like, so the I, it's been a long time since I put a matte lip on and like a, with that, and because it always, it always feels like it just, you know. Dries. And yeah, and this it pulls is, in. Yeah. And then, and then at some point it doesn't become flattering anymore because it's so dry, but this is just so yummy and, and moist. Like it's just a nice, it's, it's, it's got a lot of like, it's obviously staying and I can feel it staying, but, but it's, nice. it's comfortable. Yeah. It's comfortable. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's comfortable. I'm going to do one last thing you guys. And this is what is something I teach, uh, and, uh, women are always like, Oh, wow. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of the tinted primer. Just add a little primer there. And I'm gonna tip it on the end of my brush. Drop a little, look up, drop a little bit under the eye and all the way around the eye. Mm. And right underneath of the brow. Oh, we didn't do brows, but that's okay. You got a little brow left over. So look in the mirror. So I add it all the way around the eye and then a little bit under the brow. And then I just kind of pulled this up. This is a tinted primer. And this just cleans mm -hmm. everything up. Look up. I must remember this. Yes. And I'm going to say something. This is not something that I've always done. I started doing this a couple of years ago. And these are things that just kind of come to me as I'm working. Uh, uh, and I started doing it on everybody in all my classes because it was one of those things. I'm like, oh, wow, that's so great. It just cleans that eye up and you're using the foundation color or the primer or whatever you're using. You're not using a concealer, you're using what's on your skin. Well, you know, it's so funny is that we didn't, we didn't use like a concealer, Yep. but, but look how good my, you know, like I, I feel like I'm always battling circles under my eyes, you know, and I feel like they look great. Look down. And we did use the Recreation Skin Firming Serum, yeah. and the serum is actually quite good on uh, under eye area. It's just so fun. It's so, so fun much to fun. look nice. Yes, <laughs> it's so much fun. YouTube channel. I'm gonna rewatch this and do all my makeup exactly like this. <laughs> uh, what I would do is I would take a concealer, the light concealer, which I know you guys have seen, and I would just drop it right here and here, mm. just a pinch right on the inside, right there and there. And then I take my ring, my, my pinky finger and I just soften it and I just bring it over just a little bit. Look okay. how great this looks. I know it looks great. Mm. Beautiful. 
Thank you guys for attending. Great to see you. Uh, hi, mom. There's mom. Hi, mom. Hi. <laughs> Did you have fun? Yeah, it was. It was really fun. I almost felt like you were doing me. <laughs> ah, good. Good. Yeah. Wonderful. I missed my trips to LA. <laughs> yes. And your yes. trip home, especially. Yeah, my, and my trips home. That's right. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Good to see you, Mom. I'm glad yeah. you can make it. You too. Bye bye, honey. Bye. Bye, you guys. <laughs> bye. bye.